Thanks so much to John and Taylor for the intro. Welcome to my analysis of the Central Queensland Capras this week. They've got a game coming up against the Pride. That's second versus fourth. They're at home, so you'd, you'd think that they'd be very keen to win that and, and probably favourites, slight favourites. On the subject of the Northern Pride, can I please just give a shout out here on Queensland League Team to one of my old players, Daniel Woodhouse, who at the age of 24, turning 25 this year, made his uh, Intro Super Cup debut. He, If you met him when he was 16, 17 and 18, you wouldn't have been too far off the mark thinking that this wouldn't have been possible. But one person believed it and continued to believe in himself, and that was Daniel. And it's a great message to all the kids out there that are watching this and all the coaches too. Just don't give up on the player that doesn't give up. And that's exactly what Daniel was, but I don't want to embarrass him anymore. I will, though, however, embarrass John Devine, if I may. Um, first of all, my website is called rugbyleaguecoach.com.au, and he sometimes leaves that out. It could be a sign of his age there. And he always likes to chip me about my weight and my weight fluctuations. And funnily enough, I've been to the gym this afternoon, which allows me to monitor and keep on top of said weight. But I didn't see anything in that gym or indeed any gym I've been to in the world that can get rid of white hair naturally. So um, if you do know anything of that, uh, and unless you have to only buy it in a bottle and there's no natural remedy, then please write in to us at Queensland League Sing. Anyway, he's probably deleted that out, but... Anywho, let's talk about the Central Queensland Capras. Last week, at halftime against the Blackhawks, they were 16 points to six down, but actually came back to win the game 30 points to 22. Now, with that information, I had a look at when the tries were scored, and one was tried, one was, one was scored, sorry, by the Capras in the first half, and five of them were scored in the second half. So when that happens, you start to think, what changed? And obviously, Predicting what changed beforehand, probably higher completion rate, ill discipline from the Blackhawks, but did they change anything in attack or in defence? So I started watching the game and let me tell you what I saw straight away. I'm going to share my screen if that's okay. Hopefully you can see the Blackhawks kicking right to left and they kick the ball dead. Now that is an indication straight away of where the game went south for the Blackhawks in the second half. They did lack some discipline. Now, the Capras have got the ball from a tap penalty. The Capras have a tap penalty right in the opposition region. But I don't know if you can notice, but there's actually three Townsville defenders on the short side, give or take. So definitely two, and the third is only just outside number three here. Now, the reason I bring this up is because I think for a big period of this game, the Capras weren't playing eyes on football. So, one pass to the number six. We've now cut out several Townsville defenders. That's now six defenders, I make it. And then you'll see there's a front and a backman option that brings the ball to the middle of the field. Now, watch the Blackhawks' defence and what they do. They readjust, they move over to the left of our screen and their right. So what Townsville have been allowed to do is follow the path that the Capras are taken. I would argue from that tap penalty, they could either go straight into the defensive line with a clean hit up, tie more defenders into the right side of our screen, the Townsville left, or shift straight away. Instead, they've moved Townsville across and allowed them to cover the area that they're now attacking. So when they're wondering why there's no space, there's probably some of the answer. Again, they've gone to a front man option, so they're trying to crash through the Townsville Blackhawks defence here, if you like. I do like, I really do like the Capra's shape. They've got a front and a back man here, the back man being the number seven, the front man being the number 17. They go number seven, back man. Now, tell me which player they should hit now based on what you see. We've got 11 front man. We've got six back man and number three in support of six. The ball goes to number 11. Let me tell you guys, that person there on the screen, the defender turning their hips in, that is the centre. That is number four. So a pass to number six to, that would have gone to number three. 
would have paid dividends that have gone in in the corner. So there's some evidence of not playing eyes up football early. Again, if they play eyes up now, they will hopefully see that there's lots of Townsville defenders around the ball and they try and crash over near there too, where they, where it's well populated. So I think that early in the game, and I'm not saying this is what they do all the time, but early in the game, the Capras were just playing without too much emphasis on looking up at the defensive line. So they need to focus a bit more on eyes up. And they've gone short again. If they'd have gone long to play a number four, he would have been on the wing and they would have been able to get an overlap. So that was something I noticed straight away. So with that in mind, I turned my attention to the tries in the second half. What I will add as a caveat now is that in the second half, all I kept hearing was six again, six again from the referee when the Capras were in possession. The Townsville Blackhawks seem to lack some discipline. The Capras are getting some momentum. They're getting some go forward. They're playing at fast tempo. Uh, there's a player called out for offside there in the Blackhawks defence, number 14, and he had to back away. So they're now marching up the field. However, that's all well and good, but they've got to come up with some tries at some point. Now, the first try comes from a kick, the first try of the second half, should I say, and that, again, is going outside the defence. So rather than trying to play through the defence, it's a form of going outside the defence. So let's have a look at this set, how it unfolds. Great exit from the Capras there. Nice little dink. The ball goes outside the defence. Try time. Now, a little bit later in the half, they get repeat sets because, like I say, the Blackhawks were quite ill-disciplined at times in this second half. They go to the line. They hit the line hard. Again, let's have a look at the Townsville Blackhawk defence. I would say they're stacking up the numbers there. If Capra shift to the other side of the field now, they'll probably find some space. As often happens, it got cut off at source. So when the number seven tried to get rid of the ball, he was rushed, so that's fine. So they've reset in the middle of the field. But then what they have done is they've now gone to the back. So rather than going front, they're now going back. So we have a front man and a back man option here. He actually misses out both of them and they score outside the Townsville Blackhawks scoring on the edges. So what I'm saying now is that part of their problem in the first half might have been trying to play through the line too much. In the second half, they took up some options of going around the defensive line. I would argue doing that first... So playing around, spreads the defence and then makes it easier to play through them. So I think they've done this the wrong way around. Rather than playing through and then trying to go outside, because this goes outside too. So now once you do that, you stretch the defence. Now, because of the poor discipline of the Townsville Blackhawks and the higher completion rate of the Capras, the middlemen of Townsville got really tired. So the Capras scored some late tries here. You may notice just one little uh, sign there that going wide works. Did you see how many Townsville players covered the edges there? So they were reactive because of those tries that went wide. Townsville moved their defences over. So now the, the middle becomes weak. And I argue if they'd have done this from the, from the start, they might have had more joy in the first half and not just the second half. And you can tell Townsville are tired with the way this try was scored. And there's another alarming try for the middle of the field for Townsville in a moment. It's coming up now. Have a look at 10 in the defensive line. He looks tired. Look at the spacings in the Townsville defensive line. And I think a lot of this is from going wide. So playing around a team first makes them consider spreading their defence more or overlo overloading certain sides of the field, whereas most teams tend to try and play through. So it's quite easy to read. Early in the game, the Cappers were just playing between the two scrum lines. You're not asking much of the defence there. You're asking them to move more if you push the ball further to each edge. Please, if you like what you've heard, have a look at rugbyleaguecoach.com.au. There's plenty of resources on there. Back over to John and Taylor. Take care.